It's the last day of September, the day Robinson Crusoe was said to be shipwrecked. My name is Carl Azus. This is CNN Student News. We start today in the Middle East. Afghanistan's new president, Ashraf Ghani, was sworn in yesterday. The country will actually have two leaders. Both Ghani and Abdullah Abdullah were bitterly divided over who actually won Afghanistan's presidential election. The U.S. came up with a deal that allows both of them to have leadership positions. But will they be able to work together on their war-torn country's problems? On the same day that Ghani took his oath of office, two suicide bombings occurred in different parts of Afghanistan. Eight police officers and several civilians were killed. The Taliban, Afghanistan's former rulers, are trying to regain control of the country. And the U.S. military mission to the country is winding down, though thousands of American and NATO troops are still there. Moving west of Afghanistan, after passing over Iran and Iraq, we come to Syria. The nation's been at civil war since 2011, and the ISIS terrorist group has moved in, taking over huge chunks of Syrian land and killing anyone who gets in their way. That includes civilians. Over the weekend, President Obama said the U.S. government had underestimated what had been happening in Syria. But despite U.S.-led airstrikes against ISIS in Iraq and Syria, the terrorist group continues to take over more territory. Near Syria's northern border with Turkey, a CNN reporter described what that looked like. Crowds of Kurds watched from Turkey. They screamed in anger. Some wept as their fellow Kurds just across the Syrian border were pounded by ISIS. They watched this truck-mounted artillery repeatedly fire into a village. The sound hits seconds later. We see Kurdish fighters running between buildings, desperately taking cover. Pinned down here, they smash a hole in a wall to get away. The noise of small arms and heavy weapons cuts through the sky. One mortar round flies way off target. Just over there, where you can see that smokestack, that was clearly mortar fire coming from across the border in Syria, landing here on Turkish territory. And you can see pretty close to where we're standing, pretty close to where all of these people are standing. The crowd is furious. The people here say the coalition's airstrikes against ISIS haven't worked. The terrorists are coming and shooting the, our people and killing the woman here, killing the child here. These ISIS fighters are advancing from the east to take Kobani, the major city in this region. On Friday, we saw ISIS trying to move in from the west, and they're attacking from the south too. Kurds on both sides of the border fear Kobani will fall unless international air power stops ISIS quickly. Phil Black, CNN on the Turkey-Syria border. From our transcript page of CNNStudentNews.com, here are three schools that requested to be on our roll call. First up, from Duncanville, Texas, we're calling on the Panthers from Duncanville High School. Now up to the Buckeye State, it's the Wildcats of Van Lu High School watching today there at Van Lu, Ohio. And what about the Bonnie Eagle Middle School Scots? It's great to see y'all in Buxton, Maine. Rachel is the name of the storm in the Northeast Pacific Ocean. It grew to hurricane strength on Saturday, but weakened afterward. It's not expected to hit land. Still, after taking a direct shot from Hurricane Odile a couple weeks ago, you can understand why residents of Mexico's Baja California Peninsula were concerned. It's been a pretty active storm season in the Northeast Pacific, not so much in the Atlantic. In the season that runs from June 1st through November 30th, we've had five named storms so far. Four of them became hurricanes, one made landfall. Hurricane Arthur hit North Carolina in July. Predicting hurricanes is not an exact science, but researchers are hoping to use science to get better at it. Hurricane hunters fly straight into the eye of the storm to gather the kind of information that alert emergency systems and help save lives. Led by Dr. Frank Marks, the NOAA Tropical Cyclone Research Team has been doing this for decades. 
carrying onboard monitors that track storms in real time to gather data so we can better understand what makes massive storms tick, so we can predict their paths and protect ourselves in the future. NOAA has an entire fleet, including two Lockheed Martin P-3 Orions, named Kermit and Miss Piggy, both veterans of more than 80 hurricanes. Now, the P-3s are getting a 21st century upgrade. Electrical and aeronautical engineers are going to work on the planes to the tune of $35 million, outfitting them with next-generation electronics, highly engineered structural changes to withstand Category 5 winds, and surveillance technology that can see deeper and farther into storms. With the upgrades, the planes are projected to fly another 15 years or more. By then, Dr. Marks hopes to move hurricane forecasting up to the stars and is collaborating with NASA on a project called NextRad to do just that. In the meantime, he'll be buckling up for a safer ride in Miss Piggy and Kermit once the renovations are complete. Time for the shout out. In which field would you use the terms coda, quadlibet, and trill? If you think you know it, you know how it works, just shout it out. Is it medicine, programming, cinematography, or music? You've got three seconds. Go. Though these words have multiple meanings, all three of them are used in the field of music. That's your answer, and that's your shout out. If you have trouble sleeping, listening to relaxing classical music has been medically proven to help. If you struggle with pain, classical music again can help, though heavy metal and techno can make things worse. If you run cross country, music that pumps you up may help you run faster and longer distances. If you want to live to 100, this is music to your ears. Music therapy is very much a real thing. If you go to big rehabilitation hospitals around the country, you'll find that it's getting used more and more. I was fascinated to see uh, people who have been, suffered brain injuries, traumatic brain injuries, and how music therapy helps them. We find that when someone is asked to sing a song, for example, after a brain injury, how many different parts of the brain get utilized. First, you gotta remember the words to that song, and then you gotta carry those words across from one side of the brain to the other to allow someone to actually begin to say those words. Then you gotta carry a tune, and that requires messages going across the middle of the brain as well. And then sometimes you can even stand up and, and do some moves with the, with the music, and that can reestablish re rhythm. So all that from just asking someone to sing a song, it's pretty remarkable. Music can induce all sorts of different moods in the brain, and people who who love listening to music regularly know what really works for them. But music can have different roles. I listen to music in the operating room, different types of music when I'm starting an operation versus ending an operation. But whether you want to sort of be revved up or calmed down, there's probably a music out there that can help you. Music is universal and it's been around since the dawn of time. It can help you live to 100. At CNNStudentNews.com, you can find every show we've done this year in our archive. You can also find free show transcripts. That's the only place we look for your roll call requests. You can also email us to let us know how we're doing, and you can get more info about major news stories in our extra credit resources section. It's all things CNN Student News. It's all a click away at CNNStudentNews.com. Last Friday night in Hattiesburg, Mississippi, a 17-year-old was named homecoming queen. Then she ran to the locker room, suited up, and came back out to play football. Mary Kate Smith is the starting kicker at South Jones High School. She honed her skills in the soccer field, then tried and succeeded in getting a spot on the football team. She says the guys don't see her as a girl, they see her as an athlete. And now, of course, homecoming queen. Her school's given her the royal treatment. It's certainly a crowning achievement, a downright upright athletic accomplishment fit for a queen. Something awesome is afoot in Hattiesburg. We hope you got a kick out of it. For now, we'll turn over to your teachers and hope you have a winning day. <laughs> 